So we might get started. So I'd like to welcome everybody to today's information session on the Asanta Infrastructure Development Work Stream. To begin today's meeting, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet, and I pay my respect to the elders past and present. Uh, and I'm speaking to you all from uh, the city of Canberra in, uh, in Gunnarbal country. So today's session is going to be a presentation followed by moderated Q&A. Um, please add questions to the chat as we go along. Uh, to open the chat, there's a button in the bottom right. Um, ARDC staff will be monitoring the chat channel and collating the questions for the Q&A session after the presentation. Um, as I said, chat window, you should be able to open via but button on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, and also you might want to speak, uh, switch to speak of you. Um, there's a, a layout button on the top right of your screen. That's personal preference, of course. So the purpose of today's webinar is to discuss an infrastructure development opportunity being offered by ARDC. But as you'll see, the infrastructure will be developed to support clinical trials research data sharing in the first instance. So a lot of discussion today will be pitched to infrastructure providers, but we welcome the researchers who are attending today uh, and we'll be addressing the research context and opportunities along the way. So to get us started and to give an introduction to who ARDC is, for those of you who don't know and what the Hassanda Initiative is, I'm going to hand over to Adrian Burton. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Adrian Burton. I work at the ARDC. The ARDC is part of the NCRIS network. NCRIS stands for the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. The logo there on the screen, it's National Research Infrastructure for Australia. It comes through the Department of Education and it's to build, as it says there on the screen, nationally significant assets, facilities and services to support leading edge research. And think of it in terms of large scale facilities that wouldn't be possible by any one research institution or jurisdiction or something like that, that we uh, there's part of the Commonwealth Government's investment in research is this National Research Infrastructure Program. There's a number of domain specific facilities that, you know, build or invest in telescopes or plant or mice breeding facilities uh, to bring that scale up to the national scale. ARDC is slightly different. It's not necessarily a domain or discipline specific um, national facility, but we deal with the cross-cutting um, challenges of data and data analytics. So high quality data collections and the analytic platforms that allow you to, to get um, value from that as well as underpinning infrastructure at the national scale for storage and compute. Um, we are a cross-cutting um, facility, as I said, and so this particular initiative, the Hassander Initiative, is a, a partnership between the ARDC and the Australian Health Research Community. Uh, and when we say a partnership, it's uh, ARDC is putting significant resources from our own uh, expertise and underpinning infrastructure and co-investment, you know, money. Uh, as, uh, but key thing is the um, the strategic intent to build something at the national scale. So back to the the, the whole NCRI introduced NCRIS is that our role here is to bring together an, a national partnership um, to um, underpin data sharing in the, the, the health um, research community. So uh, it is a partnership, you know, we are here to catalyze that and to, to move it along, but uh, we do believe it's uh, a community, uh, it's an initiative that belongs to the whole research, the health research community. Uh, and why are we doing it? We, uh, through the consultation of uh, probably 18 months before this stage, um, we have heard very strongly from this community that health data sharing and secondary use of the data that comes from health research projects, such as clinical trials, 
cohort studies and uh, registries, for example, um, that they can bring a lot of value, the, the, the reuse of that, the availability of that data for reuse. Um, would bring value to the research community, we'd have uh, broader increases in the impact of that research. Um, make sense from the in health research investment point of view to um, build new research from our previous assets. And uh, we've really focused this program on saying, well, how could that secondary use um, have real translational health um, benefits. So that's the, the objective where, you know, uh, and the key things there are, we're looking at something via a national infrastructure, ARVC is partnering with the whole community. And the idea is to unlock the value uh, of the data outputs of health research for um, further reuse. I'll hand back to Kristen just to take us through then the particular has to have a program and where we're up to. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Um, so as Adrian was saying, the priority for ARDC and for Hasanda is on enabling research impact and translation. And as he alluded to prior to the formal launch of Hasanda, ARDC held preliminary discussions with peak national health research organizations with a focus on these areas. Uh, these discussions identified uh, that opportunity for ARDC to facilitate data sharing from clinical trials, uh, clinical quality registries, cohort studies, amongst other research areas to improve the impact and translation of their research. As part of the formal launch of the Hassander Initiative in late 2019, ARDC invited these organizations to form an advisory committee for Hassander and provide feedback and advice on ARDC's uh, strategy and direction for the program. Based on those discussions with our advisory committee, ARDC selected investigator-initiated clinical trials as the first primary focus uh, for Hassander's infrastructure and as a proof of concept of what we're trying to do. Uh, this particular research area meets our criteria for supporting research translation, uh, but it's also one of the more mature health research data communities with respect to its data standards, uh, its methodologies, its community coherence and organisation. So in effect, what that means is there's a shorter path between their current data sharing capability and what um, Hassander will deliver. Uh, so they provide a good candidate for a proof of concept. So ARDC identified three key priorities and work streams for the Hassanda program. Uh, first work stream I'll mention is the infrastructure stream. It's the reason that we're here today and it's the stream under which we'll start building the national infrastructure to support the sharing and secondary use of clinical trials data. The key elements of this stream are the design, testing and deployment stages of the infrastructure. But as I'll explain shortly, it will be informed and supported by the other two work streams and ARDC will be coordinating the activity between the streams. The uh, second stream I'll mention is data development. Um, so data development is a process for establishing the business requirements, the information needs and specifications of a national data asset. Uh, it's a process that's been developed by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare for establishing a data asset. Uh, so AIHW is a government agency with over three decades experience working with health data and statistics to inform and support uh, health policy and service delivery. Uh, ARDC is going to be separating out this process into three stages. The first stage were consultations held last year uh, and were an initial broad requirements gathering process. The second stage will be a focused design process and those of you who are invited into the infrastructure stream will be involved in the design process within this data development is essential for the success of Sander. So we're currently uh, initiating focused workshops with some of these groups and the feedback we receive will add to the requirements we already gathered from that initial broad community consultation conducted under the data development work stream. The culture and policy stream will also engage in work packages around ethics and consent and policies to enable the Sanders infrastructure and ongoing governance. So the diagram on screen is intended mainly as a communication tool uh, to express our priorities, our resourcing and our high level approach to Hassander. 
Um, it's not a detailed work plan and there is intersection and crossover between the streams as I've mentioned. I'll be presenting a work plan later, but a point I want to make here is that HACANDA is a nationally coordinated initiative in which stakeholders will be working collaboratively and not competitively. I'd also note, and health researchers will be aware, that in other regions like the US with NIH and uh, the UK's Medical Research Council, there has been significant progress in their national approach to data sharing and infrastructure to support their researchers. Uh, and we would hope that the HACANDA program provides a way forward for the Australian health research sector. Uh, so where we're up to at the moment or what we've completed so far. Um, so prior to the launch of the infrastructure development activities later this year, um, ARDC will or has completed, uh, will be completing a requirements gathering process. An initial set of requirements was identified via that development stream last year, as I said, which involved an open, open consultation uh, with approximately 100 attendees from the clinical trials research community. The aim of that was to establish the research purpose, uses and value proposition for the national data asset and the HACANDA infrastructure, and also to test the community support and establish buy-in for HACANDA. AIHW were consultants for this process. They helped guide the design and help facilitate the workshops. The report itself was drafted by an external editorial team who contributed throughout the workshops and analyzed the feedback that we received. Uh, this report is published on our website and was referenced in the information for today's webinar. So the consultations uh, established a number of key things. Uh, first one being the research use. Uh, for national data asset and you can see on screen uh, what the three primary research uses were systematic reviews secondary analysis and so on um, it was identified that these in turn uh, can facilitate things like policy development new study design health technology assessment uh, and clinical guideline development the consultations also identified the information needs for the data asset Overwhelmingly, researchers want access to participant data, or IPD. And that's not a surprise for a lot of people here. Um, but they also require study protocols to contextualize the participant data and data descriptions or dictionaries and quality statements so that the IPD can be used effectively and efficiently. Attendees didn't indicate a priority for the standardization of IPD itself, but they did indicate a need for a standard approach to cataloging the various data sets and documents produced by clinical trials. Uh, the reason for this is that cataloging these research outputs from trials allows them to be easily discovered by researchers who want to reuse the data, as well as improving the planning of new research and the efficiency of managing access to data. Um, now, the number one feasibility concern that was identified was, unsurprisingly, around the ethics and consent requirements for data sharing. Uh, and some attendees were also concerned about the additional resources that may be required uh, to enable data sharing within their research groups. Uh, but attendees actually saw a nationally coordinated approach like Cassandra as an enabler of change and an opportunity to address these common issues that they face. Indeed, the overall community response to the HACANDA initiative was strikingly positive and researchers were incentivized by the prospect of increased research collaboration opportunities uh, and impact that data sharing provides. The feedback we received also validated uh, our vision that our approach must be collaborative and must coordinate between the key stakeholder groups in clinical trials research. So, our wonderful editorial team distilled all this feedback into a set of principles and recommendations uh, to guide Sanders infrastructure development. And with their endorsement and with AIHW's support, ARDC identified three key areas for investment and the design of the infrastructure. The first area is the development of coherent data practices. That's the name that we've given it. Um, these will be a set of community defined expectations or best practice guidelines for data sharing, uh, information standards for data sharing, data access practices uh, and ethics and consent practices. 
the consultations didn't identify any existing set of practices that researchers wanted to see mandated in Australia. Uh, and there actually didn't appear to be any really dominant standards currently across the sector. Uh, but worksheet, uh, workshop attendees were keen for a set of national standards or approaches uh, being developed that could give them guidance in these areas. However, based on our current information, we think it's unlikely that a standard one size fits all way of doing things will emerge, uh, at least initially. Uh, but something like a framework to guide researchers and give them options to choose from seems practical and of value at this stage. So for example, um, the UK Data Service has a framework for data access, uh, which involves a three-tiered model. Uh, incidentally, UK Data Service are the people that came up with five safes, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard of that. So the three-tiered model defines three levels of authorising access to data, either by making it open and freely available, uh, which probably isn't going to be possible with clinical trials data. The second level of having mediated access in which the data custodian must grant permission for someone to access their data. Or a third uh, most restricted level of controlled access in which people can um, access data, but with the custodian's permission and only within a secure uh, research environment approved or analytical environment approved by the data custodian. Um, so the reason I bring this up is that there are practices out there which we could replicate or use as a basis for an Australian approach. But the key outcome of this part of the Hassanda infrastructure is to build consensus on a set of practices that we can adopt as a national standard. So the second major element uh, of our infrastructure is what we're calling coordinated data services. And it's this element that is the focus of the current call um, and is what we're here to discuss with you today. The purpose of this part of the architecture is to establish a distributed network of infrastructure nodes embedded within institutions or potentially clusters of institutions who agree to uh, work together to share a node. The nodes will supply the research data catalogues and outputs of clinical trials run at their uh, respective locations into the national Hazanda data asset. By making their research catalogues visible to the network, institutional nodes can enable that data discovery, research planning, and so on that I mentioned before. Uh, we also expect nodes to adopt the coherent data practices from the last slide uh, for providing access to their data. Um, but nodes will actually be involved in the design of those practices. And it's worth emphasizing uh, for those out there who are concerned about this, that the research data itself will stay with the custodian in the institution system or node and would only leave that node if access is granted by the node operator or the data custodian. So each node will hold its own data uh, and it will do so using its own data infrastructure and systems. So with the SANDA, ARDC is not looking to build a new single repository that we want to hold everyone's uh, data for them. Instead, what we want to build, uh, what we want to do is build capacity into the existing infrastructure at institutions so that they can meet a national standard that they themselves will help design. A simple example of how this might work is that each node makes use of its existing repositories and data catalogues, uh, but develops an API that can allow communication with the Hassanda network. What Hassanda will do is help the research community and institutions define what the information and functional requirements of that national network should be. The other key part of establishing the node network uh, is the creation of a governance mechanism to oversee its ongoing management. Uh, ARDC sees itself as a catalyst and coordinator of this national infrastructure development. Uh, we, we expect that the nodes will play a key role in the ongoing governance of the wider network once it is established. So the final element of the design uh, is federation services. So federation services are not part of the current open call that we're discussing today. But as you can see, they complete the design uh, of the infrastructure and they explain the importance of the node network. So the federation services uh, will be the applications and interfaces that allow researchers to interact with the node network um, and that will enable research and data discovery access, secondary use, so on. Uh, these services will rely on the foundation that that node network provides. And a simple analogy, um, 
excuse me for this, is that the Federation services are to Hisanda what Trivago or Booking.com are to hotels. So Trivago is a simple interface that allows a person to see what kind of rooms are available at a wide range of hotels. Uh, you can look around at what hotels and rooms are available, but if you want to access that room, then you need to follow a specific process to get access to that room. Similarly, a federation service in Hisanda might let you see what research documents or data are being held at different nodes or institutions, but if you want to access those uh, data or documents, then there will be a clearly defined process you need to follow. Uh, the other thing to consider with federation services is they don't just need to be data catalogues uh, and request systems. They can be um, as advanced as your imagination allows, but they will rely on the foundation of the node network. Okay, so that was uh, an overview of the progress we've made so far uh, and the directions we're going with this infrastructure design. Um, so now we're going to focus in on uh, how we will go about establishing the node network. Um, and the purpose of this webinar is to open the call for research institutions and organisations to establish themselves as a node in the Hassanda network and to be part of those nationally coordinated data services. So, uh, starting in March, we'll be asking institutions to register their interest to become a node in the Hassanda network. To be a node, you'll need to be able to provide three key things. And I referred to these before, but uh, they're worth repeating as they're the key characteristics. So firstly, nodes will need to be the owners uh, or the custodians of clinical trials data, or uh, they will need to be able to provide the node service to data custodians. Um, and they will also need to share metadata about their trials via the network. So in this context, because metadata means different things to different people, but in this context, it means the descriptions of the data and documents produced by the trials. So uh, in the first instance, you won't need to provide the actual files themselves, uh, initially that description. Uh, the formats that the documents and data need to be shared in will be determined uh, during the initial design phase for the node network. And again, nodes will provide input into those designs. Uh, nodes must also be willing to respond to data requests to access their data, but there is no unconditional requirement uh, that all requests must be improved, uh, must be approved. Um, Instead, we would expect nodes to commit to a framework for determining whether data requests should be approved. And again, the nodes will contribute to the design of that data access framework. The second thing that nodes will contribute, uh, nodes will provide their own data infrastructure. So Hassanda won't be mandating specific IT systems or software uh, that nodes must use, but we will facilitate the establishment of that national standard for the information uh, and functional requirements of an institution systems uh, and what those systems must meet so that that will enable them to join the node network. Nodes will then be responsible for implementing that national standard within their own operational environments. Uh, and th the third element finally is once the network is established, we expect nodes to have ongoing input into the governance and oversight of the network. Uh, but as I said before, ARDC will support this by working with the nodes to facilitate the design and rollout of the governance model. So those were the business functions that nodes will provide. Now, if establishing a node at your institution and being part of this national network is something you'd like to do or are interested in, then as a node operator, uh, we'd be expecting you to contribute to Sander uh, to the program in these three ways. Firstly, node operators are expected to contribute to most, aspect, most aspects of Hassanda's design. Uh, this is mutually advantageous as nodes will be key operators in the infrastructure, so your input in the design will ensure that Hassanda is feasible, uh, but node operators are also going to want their priorities and requirements factored into the designs. Secondly, once those designs are complete, then nodes are expected to implement and embed them within their operational environments. ARDC is facilitating the requirements gathering and design stages, uh, but it will be up to node operators uh, how to adapt their infrastructure to meet those designs and requirements. Uh, and the third element, final key element, uh, is that we want to see 
these infrastructure designs embedded within the nodes so that they will become a normal part of business as usual and can be sustained by the node operators. So our approach to establishing the nodes will essentially follow a design development and deployment approach. But before I take you through the indicative work plan for that, uh, I want to just pause for a moment to emphasize the ethos that AIDC is bringing to Hisanda. So AIDC sees Hisanda as a co-creation project amongst the key stakeholder groups in health and clinical trials research. So the trialists, the researchers, um, the organizations, the participants, health consumers, and key funders and policymakers like NHMRC. ARDC's role is to coordinate these stakeholder groups and facilitate the consensus building and design processes, uh, as well as investing in the development and deployment process. Once the initial set of nodes has been identified, uh, they will provide key input into the design of the infrastructure, as I said, but then assume primary responsibility for implementing those design requirements at their respective locations. So this is a nationally coordinated and collaborative approach that involves more groups than just the nodes, uh, but node operators will have agency throughout this process. So our work plan reflects that ethos and will be carried out via four main stages. As discussed, uh, requirements gathering started last year and will continue to the middle of this year and are being conduct, uh, coordinated by ARDC and its contracted partners for this stage. Uh, so we've already have the requirements of the broader research community, as I discussed earlier, and over the next few months, we'll be completing focus consultations uh, with clinical trials networks and research participants to add to and refine to the principles and requirements that we've already obtained. Uh, I don't want to preempt the outcomes of these consultations, but uh, I'd expect that they will refine some of the details around govern, uh, governance issues like ethics and consent, data access, uh, and issues like researcher acknowledgement and data custodians' rights and responsibilities. Uh, ultimately, the outputs of this requirements gathering phase uh, will inform the next stage, which is the node design phase, uh, which will run through the second half of this year. ARDC will again coordinate this phase, but uh, the node design will be decided with the input of the node operators uh, and other groups who can provide expert uh, guidance on issues like data access, ethics, informatics, and so on. And the output of this process will be the information, functional, and data access specifications for the nodes. So following that, we'll move into the node development phase, which will run for approximately 12 months. Uh, at this point, node operators will take those design specifications uh, from the previous phase and build them into their local operational environments. Um, ARDC, again, will provide support by coordinating these activities across the nodes and by providing investment into the nodes. The work packages here will be the fairly typical dev test deploy scenario and ARDC will confirm the successful deployment of the node by assessing that it meets the specifications for federation. We'll also require node operators to document their nodes design and operation specifications for posterity and ongoing sustainability. The final phase in this work plan is a six month test and deployment of at least one federation service. And the goal of that is to ensure that the nodes operate successfully as a network. Uh, ARDC will run the federation service development as a separate activity to this node establishment, uh, but will coordinate uh, coordinated with the node development activities. Um, also during this final phase, uh, we plan to have the initial governance policies and procedures for the uh, node network put in place, uh, and that will come from the establishment of a governance structure that the nodes will contribute to, as I mentioned. So that's the overview. Um, but before I hand back to Adrian, I just want to emphasize again that the nodes are key contributors to the design aspects and have agency throughout the development process. Uh, but you won't be going it alone and ARDC will provide coordination and support and there will be additional expertise and input provided by other key stakeholders and groups. Um, so that's that in a whirlwind. Uh, I'll hand over to Adrian, who's going to take us through the ROI process.
You caught me napping, Kristen. I'm back. Um, thanks for that, Kristen. Uh, so, Kristen was talking about the timeline there that you know we're um, continuing the consultation process, and then we want to start the node design uh, more formally. Uh, by the middle of the year, by June, July. So between now and then, uh, we're looking for to establish you know, who those nodes will be. Uh, so we've got a little process over the next three months that will allow people to register an interest uh, for us to then be able to facilitate between some of those uh, expressions of interest. And then uh, finally to invite uh, proposals, uh, proposals to become nodes. We should, we hope to have that all uh, confirmed by the middle of the year and that will allow us to kick off that node design phase that Kristen uh, walk, walked us through. So that's the uh, sort of general uh, idea there. A reg registration of interest is exactly what it says. It should be fairly lightweight, and but enough for us to say, uh, oh, well, perhaps there's clusters developing here that we could, um, facilitate conversations between uh, also ideas of how the coverage might go. It's, an, uh, it's a point where you can say, well, here's what we understood and you can discuss again with the ARDC to say, um, you know, to clarify your understanding of what um, being a node means. Um, so that's the, then, so that's the registration of interest and then facilitation at that point, yes, we will ask for people to specifically submit a proposal. Kristen alluded to the fact that it's not meant to be a competitive process. Um, so facilitation and, uh, is an important part of this. Um, we've already been through and continuing this uh, community consultation about what people want. And there's a design there of how you know, that can be delivered through this node model. So this is not the kind of, I don't know, like an ARC thing where you're competing on a new or shiny idea or a different thing. This is more about the capacity to respond to this model and, and uh, to be part of that collaborative design process, to be able to contribute to that um, and to be one of a, of a collaborative set of nodes. So that's more the kind of thing we're looking here for rather than a, something, you know, a, a competition on some new ideas or something like that. Um, I think we'll go on to the next slide. So some of the things that we'd be looking at and these are indicative and we'll clarify these with you uh, with some of the feedback during that facilitation process uh, and certainly before the um, official submissions. But if you're looking at an individual node criteria, um, you know, what kind of research data would be likely to come through this node? What are the established relationships with particular research programs or institutions that would mean that this node really has a good, um, uh, a good chance of being a, a really rich source of uh, clinical trials data that could be used for um, guidelines and secondary analysis, etc. We do, if you look through the uh, background information that's on our website, which I encourage you to do, there is this idea of nominated trials. Uh, each of the nodes will be asking them to say, well, apart from the generic relationship that you might have with, I don't know, anything from these three institutions, you know, that general idea of what data, what research might be covered, we will be asking you to nominate some specific trials that you know are underway uh, and that could that by the end of this development process we'll be using them as the test uh, of the infrastructure that yet we can deliver these particular trials through the um, through the new node and will be yes they'll be part of that um, testing uh, of that final phase of testing to say yep we have an infrastructure and we're actually sharing a number of nominated trials through those. So that's so that will be another component of the, the coverage there. And then, of course, yeah, the, the future research activity that would come through there. Uh, we'd be looking at, you know, to, at being satisfied that, you know, that the data is not only 
of high value to for research and, and research translation but also that it it's feasible you know that actually the it's data that is can be fair you know findable accessible and interoperable and reusable and it, um, that there is a, a kind of a track record of having data that can, is shareable another track record thing we'd be looking from from the individual nodes would be um, have they ever operated any infrastructure before or do they have relationships with institutions that have you know enterprise um, uh, IT that, that can partner with them to really deliver a, 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 a research infrastructure rather than a research project you know IT you know this is really stepping up to a new level of, uh, of delivery um, and of course, we're looking for this, that collaborative spirit and the ability and people who can uh, contribute to the node uh, design phase that Kristen was talking about. And then of course, we'll be looking, you know, are the institutions and the alliances involved, are they likely to be long-term players in the health research system and therefore have a, you know, a compelling um, confidence that uh, after the establishment project that we have ways of embedding this back into business as usual. So that's you know how you you know the kinds of things we'd be looking for from a, a, a good note, um, and then there's a portfolio criteria that we'll also have to, from the ARDC point of view, look at. Say, okay, if we have, and we are at the moment running with a rule of thumb of around ten uh, nodes. So from the uh, the number of initial nodes that we establish, is there a story that says that this is a you know, a good significant first step. We don't, we know that, you know, this is, um, you know, a 10 year plan for as far as we're concerned. This is the first two or three years of the establishment, but we do want to establish uh, a network of nodes that has, you know, the best possible coverage of um, the different kinds of research, the different kinds of disease, uh, the different types of uh, institutions, a good coverage of the major institutions that are involved in health research, um, that there is coverage of the jurisdictions, um, other you know, and other important things for the program, like um, different communities being involved, and um, that idea that we brought up that the whole purpose of this is for translational research. So, um, do we have all the right partners there that are um, heading towards? Uh, new guidelines and meta-analysis in, in different areas. So there's, that, that is the portfolio criteria that we have to look at uh, across the different nodes as well. But uh, again, hopefully you, you, you'll see that these are the criteria that just reflect the objectives of the whole initiative and that's what we'll be using it for. So uh, then just to come back to what the next steps for you are if you've listened to this and you're interested the key next step is this uh, registration of interest um, between March the 1st and the 31st um, we will then be taking those registration of interest through to the facilitation phase so um, you need to get yourself into that in, into the pipeline during that uh, registration of interest phase um, and then, as I said, we'll be working through any of the connections uh, and coverage questions during the facilitation phase and then um, getting some proposal submissions in May. I think we'll pause there. And uh, that's all we've got to say as far as the information sharing part of it is. We're open for questions. We did ask for some questions during the uh, as you all registered so we've got a few of those to go through we'll probably go through those first and then we also have some that have come through on chat if you have yes. any questions feel free to put those in the chat and uh if we have time yeah, that's, we'll, we'll that's we'll right. cover them now and if we don't have time we will answer these questions in a um, uh, frequently asked questions kind of page and um, as i mentioned at the top uh we had uh, some colleagues so Rhys Williams has been um monitoring the chat and is going to be uh, moderating this session. So, um, so yeah, Reese, over to you. So we've got a few questions for us beforehand and in the chat around the scope, perhaps we can deal with those first. So for example, there's been talk about clinical trials. Is there going to be support for other kinds of studies? And in particular, Sienna Gould's asked about 
um, things like observational studies, clinical registries, other kinds of things. So perhaps some comment about the, the scope of Asanda. Sure. Um, so uh, we're starting with clinical trials as a proof of concept, because um, obviously anything in, in health, there's a line in the sand. Um, we, uh, ARDC has uh, longer term plans to scale up the Hasanda model um, to incorporate those other research areas. Um, and maybe Adrian, you, you have a better sense of the timeline for that. Sure, yes. The, all the stuff we talked to you about today is to build a, a, a network that is really focused on that first phase of getting coverage of clinical trial uh, outputs. Um, health studies is definitely the full scope for Hassanda. In fact, the HE at the beginning of Hassanda is, is health studies. So cohort studies and, and uh, um, clinical quality registries and you know, related things are in scope for us. And we'd want to keep that mind in mind, for example, when we're thinking about how the nodes, uh, the, the portfolio of different nodes really, um, are established. Uh, as far as doing that, we, we hope that during uh, the timeline that you just saw, we would start to do some of the background consultation uh, with the uh, cohort studies community and the re clinical registries communities in Australia. And by the time we get to the uh, infrastructure deployment stage here, that we'd be uh, ready to do a second phase um, uh, with the broader health studies data in scope. Thanks, Adrian. And I think a sort of a related question is um, somebody's asked about international programs. So what happens when, for example, the work that's going on with the trial data here is part of a, a nas an international setting? How does that affect Asanda's work and the design of the nodes and the design of the project? It's a good question. Uh, the international landscape is also emerging as, you know, as we develop here in Australia. The very first thing to say is that uh, by having a coordinated uh, national infrastructure approach in Australia, we should be able to come to the table to some of these uh, larger international uh, initiatives. Um, and we will um, particular, what's the word, explicitly reach out to you know, the European and US models that are uh, emerging there. As far as shared data outputs from international trials, that is usually part of the, the setup of the trial itself. Uh, but we, again, I would hope that by having good quality ca capability and capacity in Australia, we would actually be a more attractive partner to some of those international uh, initiatives. Okay. And uh, just one's just come in um, from from Tim also, is are we talking about things that have finished completed trials, which obviously takes a while to finish? Or are we talking about having the, the Hassanda initiative to include things that are in progress. Is there any sense of that from the consultations? We focused in on the shareable, you know, the, the objective there is to um, an infrastructure that supports sharing and secondary use of health uh, data, health research data. So uh, that would depend if there's um, outputs that are shareable as interim parts of a project, then yes, they should be able to fit into this um, program. Okay, yeah, I, I, think there, I think there'll be a balance there. It did come up during the consultations. Um, the research community uh, said that going back and um, uh, if modifications needed to be made, to data and files and documents from completed trials to um, make them available in Hassanda, then there's obviously a gap there that they'd need to close and that um, it's much easier to uh, fit into Hassanda if they know from the outset of a trial um, that that is going to be one of the outcomes of the project. Um, so, so that was a comment in the consultations, uh, but as, as Adrian said, uh, part of our evaluation criteria uh, for nodes will be um, whether they're able to nominate trials that could um, uh, be included in Hassanda uh, from around the time of launch. And we understand that there is a, a mix 
uh, of status there between trials, their completion state, their readiness for, for publishing and so on. Um, and so I think part of the facilitation phase is to have those discussions with potential nodes um, to understand their situations and, and uh, how feasible it would be for them to, um, to make their data available. Okay, thanks. Um, there may be some around scope in a minute. I might come back to those if I find any more, but perhaps a little bit about the, the nodes themselves. So a few people have asked, but this one is around that's come in beforehand is the costs. So what kind of node costs would be part of AAC's investment? Um, you know, is it around equipment and licenses, staff costs, other kind of costs? What's the sort of current thinking? Good. Well, as far as these projects are concerned, you know, they, they, are, they are the node establishment projects. And so the, the co investment from ARDC is around uh, establishing uh, the functionality of the node. Um, so um, the kind of normal things that you'd expect there are the, the staff, um, the, obviously the staff and development costs there. There are some you know, licensing and other um, underpinning infrastructure things that are, are required as part of the development of the node. Um, we'd be happy to get more feedback from people during the facilitation phase as to the kinds of activities that uh, kind of costs that are uh, uh, related to the establishment of these nodes. Yep, thank you. Um, what have I got here? If someone is, else is hosting a world standard secure data hub, would a Xander be willing to deploy its data holdings into another hub? Um, and it was a similar question, which was around how will data be distributed to those who are, for example, not nodes? I think it's a related question, but it's basically, um, I guess that's about our data holdings becoming available to others. Uh, well, uh just reading that question. If someone else is hosting a world standard secure data hub, if you're the person who did this, you know, feel free to clarify in the chat whilst we're answering, but I'll answer what I think the question is asking. Um, if someone is, if there's a world standard help for doing this, we you know, deployed that through Sander. Uh, as Kristen pointed out, the ethos here is uh, not for ARDC to um, mandate any software or even governance approaches at each of the nodes. Um, but for you to, for, for the nodes to be able to dovetail this back into the systems and processes that you have uh, at, at those nodes. So in, in principle, uh, we are just looking for the, the outcome and the functions. And uh, if you have a world standard um, way of uh, delivering this, we're uh, super happy to have that. Um, so, Adrian, you, you see Alison's question. I thought I naively thought that uh, that saying the sort of things that ARDC would invest in would answer Alison's question, but she's asking, can what's the incentive to be a node? Um, I presume she means financial incentive, but there could be others. Uh, and now I'm a bit lost as to which question we're answering. So Alison's question was, what's what is the incentive? Is, is, what is, is there any incentive for an organisation to become a node? Um, well, you've seen what the uh, the kind of mission and objectives of the uh, Sander uh, initiative is. So the very first thing was we'd be looking at uh, institutions who, perhaps for different reasons from the ARDC, but for the same you know societal good reasons that they are, uh, that they are looking to. What's the word? Uh, make sure that there is a. Sorry, my phone just keeps ringing and I can't stop it from ringing. Uh, we'd be looking for institutions that share the same objective of unlocking the value from uh, research data of uh, the outputs of these health studies, the research data in that area. Um, so yes, we would be looking at people who are at institutions that are, um, have an aligned uh, mission with us. That would be the number one incentive. Um, to be part of a national leadership in how uh, data sharing happens in Australia would be you know, perhaps another incentive to be able to um, be on the forefront of uh, getting access. You know, if you're a part of this node network, then you will be right there uh, and the members of your institution of your cluster 
we'll be right there getting access to uh, the outputs of, uh, of uh, other research. Um, so yes, we're, we're looking for organisations who actually have that in their own ethos uh, and would therefore um, contribute to, to the initiative. If there are other incentives, we are providing incentives to establish the nodes as far as um, establishment money is concerned and we will be also looking for uh, longer term operational um, support for this um, within the research uh, system as well. So Adrian, a related question to that is after the project period, so after 2023, is the institutional node expected to be financially and operationally sustainable um, after that? That was yes. one of the questions that came in beforehand. Yeah, so look, continued, uh, first thing, ARDC will be continuing to be part to participate in this. As I said, we're, from our point of view, the first two, three years are the establishment phase and we fully expect uh, from our point of view, to be committed for you know a ten-year period to you know, realise the benefits of this. So, from our point of view, yes, we will be uh, continue to be involved after the projects. Um, the, uh, I said that that is one of the criteria that we'll be looking at. Is is there a compelling, you know? Uh, um, opportunity that the node will continue after the uh, project period. As far as sustainability and the models are concerned, um, we will, that will be again part of the, a working group amongst the node operators to look at the different um, sustainability models. Um, and we are, you know, the spirit we would bring to this is, is this idea that it's the health, it, this is the health research community and we're building a cooperative infrastructure where everyone's getting a benefit and that it is part of national infrastructure. So we'd be wanting to have the, um, the easiest possible access for the end users. That's our spirit to begin with. And we will be convening a sustainability working group across the uh, nodes to look at the different sustainability models that, that could be applied um, after the project. But it will be something we'll look at at the nodes right from the beginning. So if it just looks like a fly-by-night, you know, one person uh, application to become a node, then that will not compare um, favorably to uh, something that comes in that says, look, we are a cluster of research institutions that have been working for a hundred years in health research and we uh, want to be part of the uh, ongoing uh, solution here. Actually, Adrian, I'm going to jump in on that because I saw a question come through yes. chat around how do you define research institutions um, and I don't have chat open in front of me because I'm on screen share. I can't remember the full extent of that, but I think it's probably worth addressing the question of um, or the issue around clustering. I'm not sure if we um, if we spent much time on that during the presentation. The, the question was, uh, you know, what do we mean by institution? Could it be partnerships between several institutions, universities, MRIs, for example? That's the question. Yes, absolutely. And remember, I said we were going off a rule of thumb of uh, around 10 initial nodes. Um, we think that that then drives us towards a model of uh, clusters either around um, subject matter area or a regional or jurisdictional or you know um, clusters of the organizations that already work together in some way. Uh, we would be looking that, the, that there is the enterprise, there is a solidity behind this, that there, there is that there are long-lived institutions behind the, uh, the cluster and behind the node. But uh, we, we do think that um, there are possibly at least a hundred you know, just research organisations doing trials in Australia. Uh, and we don't think that a model that, that starts off with, you know, 100 different solutions is, is a good one. We're looking for a, something, uh, a simplification for the end user. Um, and so we are encouraging our, uh, institutions to work together in uh, clusters. A, a question which might answer, which sort of relates to that is somebody asked if, if you're not a member of a node, um, the federation, the federated um, process later, is that restricted to those who are only members who are only nodes or, uh, or will it be available to a wider group? I think I know the answer to that is yes, it will be. But in... 
uh, the spirit of this is we are building national research infrastructure to support um, research um, in a, to actually remove the barriers to access to data and uh, increase research across Australia um, without preempting the legitimate requirement, you know, the, the legitimate requirements of the researchers and others. Uh, that will be taken into account during those stakeholder engagement things that um, um, Kristen talked about earlier. Um, so, uh, the, you know, the access is, is definitely something that, that you know, needs to be a, a, a nice balance. Um, and, you know, the, the, the node operators obviously will be there leading the initiative, but in, the in principle answer to your question is, Yes, this is open infrastructure for to increase research all the way across Australia. There will be access uh, restraints, um, you know, based on the legitimate needs of the patient groups and the researchers themselves. And Adrian, to follow on, which I know is not the order of questions are received, Tories asked once established, is the exchange of the data from a node to another to other parties going to be commercialised, or is the idea here that it's a purely a you know a free exchange of information? Which I think I'm only putting that one up now because I think it follows on from what you just did. Yes, uh, and again, remember I started the whole thing with the establishing you know the emphasis as part of national research infrastructure, so the spirit of this is to you know, build an infrastructure that, that uh, um, will increase the amount of data reuse uh, in Australia um, and so we'd be trying to at all at all options to reduce the friction on, on reuse okay um, we have a little bit longer so a couple of questions about the design of the time frame and some of the technical aspects of the process so we've talked about there being a time frame we're just going to find the one uh, obviously, the consultation process to this stage is decided on the time frame. Uh, the question was, uh, how did they, how did we arrive at a time frame that was sort of three to four years um, rather than um, a, a longer time frame? Because there seems to be a lot to do. It was that did the time frame that you've decided for the current step come out of the consultation process, or um, the person asking the question was concerned, of course, but about data ready, readiness? Do we know? If this, if that's realistic, is that feasible, or is is the time frame being have we have we arrived at the time frame for the project? It's a good, it's a very good question. Um, it's a uh, in discussion. Yes, it has come out of the consultation, and it's a balance between the urgency of people to actually uh, establish an infrastructure. Uh, we're looking at it as a feasible time to. Remember, I keep saying these are node establishment projects, so we think it's a, a feasible time to establish a set of nodes and the infrastructure to deliver some data. Uh, I do agree with the premise of the question that potentially uh, the readiness of data and the culture and, and potentially going back over old data sets if necessary, that could be a much longer term um, uh, sort of initiative. Uh, but uh, yes, this is based on the, the feasibility of actually establishing uh, the underpinning infrastructure for this. Yes, and there have also been a couple of questions which sort of impinge on workflow about um, preparedness of data quality to be accepted. So will there, you know, um, how do we make sure the information coming from the different nodes is homogeneous or at least consistent, meaning a minimal data quality standard? Um, and therefore will be acceptable, if you like. How, do, how, how will we do that? Sure, I was just about to cross to Christian today, but he's been handed a, an important piece of paper there. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, we, uh, yep, uh, timing was a little awkward. Uh, the question was around the information standards, was it? Well, it's, it's, uh, there have been a couple of questions, paraphrasing them, that have asked the yep. question about the difficulties of um, data quality in the first case, and making sure that there's high data quality, you know, yep. garbage in, garbage out, of course. Um, and yep. I think that there is a second one, which I'm going to ask now, which is about automation. Obviously, there's a lot of movement of data. Is that going to have to be manual? Is it going to be automated? How will we deal with that, with the quality issue and the automation of the movement of the data? 
Um, so I think the issues around uh, data quality um, <clears throat> and standards uh, and uh, as well as metadata quality and standards um, will be part of that design uh, no design process that we're talking about um, and that uh, hopefully we'll soon confirm that AHW uh, will be leading that process for us. Um, so yes, the, there will be uh, standards introduced there that um, the goal there, of course, number one objective has to be to meet um, the uh, research reuse requirements, but it also has to be um, feasible and practical um, for it to, to proceed. Uh, the second question was on automation. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what aspects we're talking about automation for. Hang on, let me see uh, if I can. I think I saw that question, so I'm happy to jump in there. Oh, thanks, yeah. Uh, they were talking about the Federation model and you know delivering description, descriptions of the, um, of the data sets yep. due to a federated sort of discovery portal, if you like. Um, and could that be uh, could that be automated? Automated. Yes, uh, we fully support that. And that would be one of the functional requirements of a node to be able to um, you know, supply um, from a technical point of view, the equivalent of a, a, an API that could be queried to pull that information, uh, which would have lots of advantages. It means we're not manually packaging stuff up and sending it through email. And uh, we always want this system to be to have a currency so that you know as soon as a node does ingest new data to be shared then the description of that data is immediately available in any discovery systems that are working over the top and we've done this before this is a kind of thing that ARDC does all the time and uh, we have there are a number of automation models there we would be hoping to uh, what's the word? Leverage off some of the international standards, potentially the ones that are uh, in in play in the health and medical area. But there are a number of IT standards for that kind of um, metadata exchange. Okay. Now there there are some questions that are coming in that are quite complicated in terms of trying to answer. In I don't know if Kristen, if you're watching these as well, what. Um, the question Steve McKeachins asks, is the federated model here want a federated data or a federated metadata or both? I think the answer to that is both. Um, okay. uh, I would not? say that we're start, we're definitely starting with federated metadata. Yes. Uh, and part of the reason for these nodes is that there are different custodian requirements related to each of the nodes. And sometimes there are different state legislations or just different you know, requirements from uh, partnerships with health services, etc., and that's part of the idea of setting it, starting up with the, the the node model is to be able to, at the data level, the data you know access, etc., um, that that uh, is handled uh, separately by each of the nodes. And I think well, I'm happy to cross to Kristen on this, but it's certainly the message that we got at the consultation phase is that there was that that um, absolute harmonization of the actual data content and the data structures is a phase two, let's call that, you know, that the, the you know, that the, uh, and that was in recognition of the fact that clinical trials can be about a lot of different things uh, and a lot of different data types can possibly be uh, represented as the output of a clinical trial. We want to be as inclusive as we can as far as the data reuse opportunities are concerned. Uh, and so we wouldn't, I wouldn't start with a, an absolute um, data sort of homogenize, harmonization program. Uh, that's not where we'll start, but we do hope that uh, by building a community of um, researchers, research infrastructure that are working together on this over 10 years, that we would also improve um, that kind of uh, data standards across the, the whole Kristen, anything yeah. about that? Uh, yeah, definitely. So I think, yeah, on that last point around IPD standardization, no, that wasn't definitely not identified in the consultations as a requirement of the research community. And those of you who work in health research know, as Adrian mentioned, it, it is just such a far reach for where we currently are. And, you know, potentially could be argued in some cases that it's not, um, uh, it's not really the approach of exploratory 
science and research. Um, the other points that I make in it, uh, because I guess people are asking, trying to get a, you know, like a, a grand design here and a, and a goal that is, um, uh, you know, that could see is highly desirable. Um, everything is automated, everything is standardized. Um, everyone does every, it's everything the exact same way. Um, but how many steps it's going to take to get there. And I think uh, ARDC is being very realistic about this and the response that we had from the consultations was very realistic about this. So, well, we can't, you know, do a hundred steps in one step, uh, but we can take the first key steps. And the, and the, the key things that um, uh, we heard back, the business requirements of priorities for researchers uh, was that um, for people wanting to, um, uh, wanting to uh, see what research was out there and what data was out there uh, and could get access to that data, that they're having, having significant problems and significant uh, inefficiencies uh, in, in doing that because they'd have to go around, effectively they were sending emails to every single research group that they could, you know, find on, on some pretty um, rudimentary searching and having to get information that way. And that's clearly inefficient and was actually um, preventing a lot of uh, meta-analysis and translational stuff being done. Um, so, uh, so researchers were quite keen on uh, the idea that if there was just a single place that they could go to, to at least see what trials were out there and what kind of data they were collecting, that would be uh, one massive step forward from where we currently are. Um, so that's one key goal. From the uh, data custodian or the trialist point of view um, <clears throat> and what might be a motivation um, to engage in something like Cassandra, uh, I just make the point and I think everyone's aware that data sharing um, and requirements around that uh, have really ramped up over uh, the last few years uh, and there are lots of policy signals um, in Australia that look like in the future, they might translate into policy requirements um, that data sharing will be mandated in um, uh, research that's you know, funded by, by those key health and medical funders. Um, even if, if a trial is only getting part of its funding from there, there will be some level of requirement. Um, and so uh, with that and with the, with the other data sharing policies that are already out there, um, say by publishers, um, I think most health researchers would have experienced that the, the data sharing options that we have available uh, to meet those requirements aren't great um, and something where they could have input into how data sharing works in Australia uh, and um, more control uh, which they're required to have often in, in ethics approval and other compliance, more control over who has access to their data rather than just having to hand it over to some third party repository is also a highly desirable thing. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of questions coming, Adrian, about the relationship between this and other things that are similar and are often infested by ARDC. For example, there's Cadre, there's Erica, um, even the imaging um, project. So the, perhaps a comment about how this relates to other ARDC investments and platform projects, for example. Sure, for those in the audience that don't know the ARDC, uh, this is a specific, a different kind of program, the ARDC, we're choosing, you know, with the community, this community, uh, a real challenge and we're just working along with the community to, to build something up. We also have other programs previously where we've run, you know, um, just an call to say what's an interesting idea to do with the platform and we've, and through that process, we actually have uh, some partnerships in developing some of these secure e-research platforms like uh, SERP and Erica and uh, the Cadre project, which is there around the policies for this kind of access. We fully intend now to pull those, you know, the outputs of those projects into this um, sort of strategic push uh, to say, well, you know, how could some of those uh, developments that be made in, in, for example, secure e-research uh, platforms, uh, how could some of the nodes, uh, you know, where uh, applicable and appropriate, 
how could some of the learning from those projects be uh, implemented into this node network? Um, so we will do that um, what's the word proactively. Um, a sort of a related question is um, asking how this metadata collection relates to the Australian Clinical Trials Registry, which I know is not an AIDC funded thing, but it is, a, if you like, a related data set or related project. So that was the Clinical Trials Registry? Clinical Trials Registry, yes. Yes, um, it is uh, highly related to the uh, ANZ CTR, the Clinical Trials Registry. It's meant to actually complement the registry um, the registry is set up for a particular purpose uh, around integrity and the fact that you know that a trial is happening and prospective registration and there's whole sets of policies for that. This is meant to just complement that with the um, access to the data that comes from a, a, a clinical trial. We've been working very closely with the ANZ CTR there on that advisory committee that uh, Kristen um, uh, outlined at the beginning. So they've been part of the driving force and the design for this. Um, on some more specific things, uh, during actually the consultation phase, people said, oh, it would be a pity if someone had to write in all the description of the, the trial you know, into the registry and then they had to go and type something in in another place around similar information about the data set. Um, so we've taken that on as a kind of functional requirement that um, the, we should be able to uh, pull information from uh, the master data sources like the clinical trials registry to inform uh, the descriptive data that will support the, the data sets in this lander. Um, so yes, it's highly, highly related and relevant to the work of the ANZ CTR. I think also that uh, what the registry does and you know, we've selected clinical trials as our uh, starting point of proof of concept. Um, something like a trials registry, which not uh, a lot of other areas in health research have, uh, is one uh, single point for those that aren't familiar with it that actually you know is is a massive data set of what research projects are being conducted and some key information about that. So um, I think and that information. Um, is very useful uh, and essential for the secondary use of, of trials data. So I think they can actually act as a model for how, um, of the kinds of information, information model that Hassanda might uh, require in the future for other research types other than clinical trials. Yep. Um, now, I, I mean, there are a few other questions, but I think some of them may actually be answered along the way and some I'm taking the liberty of saying are really some detailed stuff that will be answered in the in the, really the process of the consultation. Uh, the, some of them are quite detailed. Kristen is there something in there that you think we've missed, substantial that we've missed? There's the, these obviously the questions that are answered now as we approach the end will be answered in a in a separate document. Um, there was one other area perhaps um, was about how the, there's been a couple of people ask how the nodes, what's the success factors? I mean, how will you know if a node is successful? Perhaps a com some comment if there's been some given to some thought to um, going forward, what will we see a, a successful node looking like? Would that be? Uh, uh, yeah. Adrian there, that's, I feel like that's very much an Adrian. I think question. Adrian, with apologies, you've answered some of that, but are there any other comments you wanted to make about um, how, how we would evaluate the success of a node? Um, again, our overall objective here is to get clinical trial, clinical trial data um, reused in further research, uh, applied in um, guidelines, uh, health, you know, emerging health guidelines. So that's the, the overall principle that we'll be looking at. Um, how, how will this node help us to get to, to that point? Um, and yes, I think I went over some of those towards the end of the presentation anyway, some of the, the actual stuff there. So we don't have anything further to add there on the details. Uh, there's a couple of things there around standards and yes the and omop and um and i think kristen has has indicated that uh, in the first instance we are looking for absolute 
uh, in a shared set of descriptive metadata for all these data assets that are around the place so that they can be discovered, findable and then accessible. Um, we will probably look at the interoperable and reusable uh, you know, as a um, second phase uh, and obviously uh, identifying key common standards and I note that Dougie Boyle's on the call here today. We're working with Dougie in a number of other projects in uh, promoting the OMOP model. Um, so yes, we fully intend to um, leverage that work uh, here as well. I'm not sure if you want to add anything, Dougie, but I'm happy to just say that it's a healthy relationship and we intend to leverage it. Yeah, I noticed there were a few things about standards. I mean, the broad answer to that is, of course, we're not trying to reinvent something and we're not going to ignore the, the vast uh, quality of good good quality work that's been going on. Mm. Um, and, the, and Steve's asked, perhaps, he's asked in those as the nodes discussion, but can you advise Brithy on the likely process for the standards development work program? No, no Steve, you're not allowed to take us off track. <laughs> You can say that to Steve. <laughs> I should point out to people that I know Steve, so that's all right. <laughs> um, I guess the broader issue there is there is a substantial um, body of work to do in that standard program overall, and we are trying to get this infrastructure piece underway, which is what today is really about. And it's been a helpful to sort of focus on that. But uh, we're not ignoring for a minute, there's other several other work streams, which, and someone's talked about the human infrastructure aspect and that sort of cultural aspect is absolutely important. We do appreciate that. We'll have that going as, if you like, a parallel stream as Christian showed you in that, uh, in that diagram, there are th several things going at once. Uh, but in the first instance, we wanna get this one underway, get the work packages underway. Yeah, thanks, Reese. That's a that's a really good response. I did see that question come through. Um, and I'm, I didn't mean to dismiss uh, Steve's Steve's question, um, uh, but Adrian, did you want to address that now or, or separately? I'm just going through some of the other questions there just before we get there. Um, um, Will it, more directly, will ARDC be co-funding the co-development of node infrastructure? Yes, so we're yep. both providing cash, cash for that and, you know, and as well as the facilitation for that co-design to happen. And um, of course, you know, we're looking to, to work with the organizations that are also committed to that goal. Um, is there any concept of an affiliate membership to a node? Look, uh, yes, that was the idea of uh, a, a node actually being a cluster of, you know, uh, like-minded in, you know, institutions that maybe come together on disease or uh, region or jurisdiction or some other coverage uh, point of view. So we would be actually be encouraging, um, and that's what uh, partly what I mentioned in the facilitation uh, phase that um, we would be looking to say, look, these people are want to be involved, uh, they don't necessarily want to host it, uh, let's put them in touch with um, another no emerging node there that they can participate with. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, jumping because there were, there have been a few questions that we've kind of addressed, but the theme is around um, the readiness of clinical trials data, the ability to share data, whether it's past data, whether it's future data. Um, and there was a question that came in prior uh, about you know if the data is co-owned, say by um, a commercial entity, or um, and I'm not sure if we've addressed that uh, fully or directly, but I think we understand and acknowledge that there are existing uh, constraints and arrangements in place for a lot mm -hmm. of data, and around the intellectual property and the custodianship of that data. Um, and you know, where, where it's not feasible, uh, there won't be a requirement to um, you know, bring in the lawyers and break the contracts around that data, for example. But what we want to do uh, is, as part of the facilitation phase um, at least, is to understand uh, what data you might potentially be able to um, uh, nominate for Hassanda. Um, and it might be around them. You might have some ready to go. There might be others that it looks like, you know, you could give the name of the trial and that's it. Um, 
but we want to understand what that is and understand the pathways and, and hopefully um, uh, users can also identify potential pathways uh, for that data to be made available via this infrastructure. And I, I mean, just as a quick aside, I, I have over a decade's experience doing this um, prior to this role in ARDC and getting uh, data out of cohort studies um, into a shareable space. And um, I think for people that haven't tried it before, there's a lot of unknowns and it feels like a lot of work. Um, and maybe there's an initial step in understanding what the approach is and engaging with uh, ethics and um, and understanding what the appropriate approvals or, or waivers sometimes from ethics committees are, um, but there often are pathways. Um, and so that's a discussion that we can have um, with people interested in this. There was a related question, uh, which I think was about fair principles. And is there a problem between fair principles competing with the principles of, re of responsible research conduct? And the answer is no, there's not. Um, fair is a, is a set of aspirations, which, which as Adrian has explained, you work towards as a, as a and, I'm, and then correct me if I'm wrong, got any advice, but um, if some institutions are not at the point where they consider to be as fair as others, that doesn't matter. We we, it's as open as possible, but as as controlled as it needs to be. Um, and I think that's come across a couple of times. So a few people have expressed concern around that. And in practice, as Kristen's alluding to, if you work through that with the custodians in the particular situation of that trial, uh, you can work through it. Um, but as the yeah. principal AIDC is working towards FAIR as a, if you like, the, uh, um, an aspirational set of principles for all of the data sets we have. Um, yeah. At the end of our time, um, well, yeah. Come on. Uh, uh, let me ten seconds. As somebody, there's a few questions about that that scope of clinical trials and other mm. really valuable health uh, data. Um, remember, our initiative is health studies, and we are looking. You know, the, the bigger picture here is to again build up into these nodes the capacity to uh, share uh, a lot of different types of data. It's just from an IT project, you don't start with a number, you know, too many uh, scenarios, you know, we build something up, but with the idea of that it uh, can and will support uh, other types of health studies data. And there's nothing stopping, even in this first phase, the individual nodes experimenting with, you know, if they've got a fairly generic, um, secure environment for, uh, facilitating data sharing, there is nothing at all stopping them and we would encourage it, uh, trialling it with uh, other, other data points. Um, we're really right on 2.30. I am just, have, I think I might just uh, close the meeting by saying thank you very much for your participation. Uh, the ARDC is, um, uh, lives off its um, community relationships with the research communities. Um, we've had some really very, very good input here and um, the, the chat will keep that very carefully and make sure that every uh, issue that has been raised here is um, identified and, and at least you know, put into the um, further consultations that are happening. Again, uh, just as a, a parting action, uh, if you are interested, uh, contact the ARDC at this um, address here uh, to get further information about it and then uh, make sure that you hit that deadline of um, the 31st of March to register your interest. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just add into that that um, once uh, the ROIs are open uh, and there's a form there to complete that we will be contacting everyone who's registered for this event just to notify them. Thanks everyone very much. It's been a, a very lively um, you know, question and answer session. Thank you very much for your commitment and uh, we look forward to working with you all into the future. Yep, thank you everyone.